Today I'm playing golf with one of the most identifiable figures in Australian sport. He's a member at Indrapilly Golf Course here in Queensland. He terrorised the opposition on the field for 12 years and they nicknamed him the Raging Bull. Let's see how he goes on the golf course with me today. You're sitting in a dressing room and you look around at your mates and we're all looking like this because we've got to go out there and do a job. But I look, there's Alan Lang. Well, he's going to do all the tricks. Look at Wendell Sale. He's going to run and score all the tries. But what I've got to do, I've got to take on their forward pack. And it could be Ian Roberts, all these big guys, 110 kilos, they're thinking the same as me. You had to make it personal. You have to make it personal and you've got to win the battle. You've got to win the yard. You've got to win the collision. It's not a contact sport, it's a collision sport. There's a guy 115 kilos, you're back 10 metres, you're running into him. Well, you've got to be going faster than him, or harder and get your body so you don't just walk out there and turn that on and do it. It was a, it'd probably take you like a bit of the day to really think and focus to get yourself to that point where you're sort of angry. Because you don't just go, oh, I'm angry now when you run on the field. You had to build to that. Mate, you're a member here at Indrapilly. Yeah. You're going to show me around today. Yeah, I am. It's a beautiful course. It's close to home. Uh, it's close to the Brisbane city, and we're on the first 530 metre par five. It's good to start, isn't it, with water right in the middle of it. Now, how does Gordy Towers get into golf? You know, you, you played all sports: yeah. basketball, uh, you know, AFL, rugby league, of course. How do you get into golf? Well, it's probably the only it's probably the only sport in the world that no one ever masters. I think no matter <laughs> what you do, and I watch the greatest players play in the masters, and every day they work on their game, and it's a game that you play against yourself. You know, you think you're playing against the course or in the weather, but I think you're always playing against yourself, and that's probably why I like that. When I played, we'd sort of get out a couple of days with Wendell and Lockie and the boys, and I find it relaxing. I'm not one of those golfers that get frustrated. It's just relaxing to be out in the nice, clean, fresh air of Queensland. All right, mate, show me how to hit them down here. Par five. Down the middle? Hit it hard, down the middle. Right. Oh, <laughs> on command. Look at you go. That actually went straight. Straight out right, of the I car. Hope you, I hope you got that. <laughs> How's Parramatta been going? No, they're going good, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, that's going to be hard to match, a long drive like that. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit too far left. Gordy, what have you got here? Par five. And how good's this? Yeah. You've got the little screens up here. Perfect. So we're a long way out. But if I lay up to about there, what's that? About one, 180? Yep. It'll leave me about 110 in. So 180, what club's that for you? Five iron, somewhere. <laughs> Jeez, you're long. That's Tiger S. No, well. Is it well, let's see. Well, let, okay, well, let's see. So I'm going to hit a five iron down there. And let's see how far we got out. OK, let's go. Uh, see that dead tree there? Yep. Just to the right of that and hopefully bring it around a little bit. Nice and safe. Good. That just went 184. 184. <laughs> there you are. That was nice, huh? I'm like 116, but there's something I want to know. How do you describe your golf game? I've seen your golf game. Um, I, I describe it powerful. Yeah, competitive, <laughs> competitive. I, I compete really hard, especially with, you know, like when you're playing mates. Yeah. Um, I don't practice. I don't get out. I'm a guy that gets out of the car running late and just goes straight to the first <laughs> tee and hits a ball, sort of thing. So, um, I'm competitive, and yeah, I'm, I'm still very. I muscle the ball around the course. <laughs> if, uh, you know, uh, handicap. If you've, have you got uh, a handicap? 16. Yeah, 16. 16. I think the lowest I ever got was about 14 or whatever. So. Um, right. My best round I played against Wendell and the boys, Matty Rogers, it was a charity day, and Chris Smith, who yep. all love their golf, and I shot an 80 at the Glades nice. and took their cash. She's always good. <laughs> and I was playing with them. And, uh, nice. So, that, so that's my best ever round, but... Um, Nothing like getting their cash. Oh, yeah. Mate I, mate, I could have shot 108. Just as long as I got their money, I was happy. <laughs> all right. 116. Any Greens, advice? It pins at the, uh, the, the front of the green here. I reckon something left of this pin would be perfect. And you know where that went? <laughs> Do you know this golf show would be a lot funnier if you showed all the bad shots and our reaction? 
<laughs> I want you to put it in. Here we go. Come on, just relax on the balls. Follow through. 116. That is. <laughs> <laughs> I got another. I got number two. Look at this. Yeah, I better keep another ball in my pocket yeah, just in no, case. No, you won't need that. <laughs> Trust me. Right here. Let's just relax. Not right. even look at the hole. 116. Nice and smooth. <sighs> You've got me now. I'm playing like Parramatta. See how Parramatta, Parramatta can rub off on you. So bad. Have another go. <laughs> oh, what are you that laughing was at, a Denise? Full on shank, that one. A full on. Oh, mate. That, that shank fed a whole family. <laughs> That's how big that shank was. It fed like an army. Oh. Look at that. Talk about that divot. How bad is that divot? Oh, we're going to have to What went wrong? Way. There was lots. Your body's moving a lot. OK, body's moving. Yeah. Uh, keep... Just let your arms swing. Right. Here. You know, you, you were telling me back on the tee what you are doing. Yeah, just... And you are just swinging your arms. Yeah, OK. You weren't, you weren't getting everything you do. <laughs> oh, look at that. Brilliant. Actually said left of the pin, but you've taken it right of the pin. But you're under the hole. Nice shot. I was right. Use my arms. <laughs> use your arms. Why, why wouldn't I just use my arms? <laughs> Gordy, you've got the ball under the hole, and you've said your putting is not the greatest. No, well, you get out of the car, you go to the drive. No one ever practices putting. Like, who <laughs> really cares? It's all about macho. Who hits the ball further? <laughs> who gets on the green? Come on, we're footy players. <laughs> That's right. Doesn't matter who kicks a goal, it's who scores a try. <laughs> All right, in a few holes' time, we'll uh, we'll work on that putting. What a bad roll. You're online. Yeah, but Never you're either online <laughs> or a mile past or a mile short. But these are the ones, you know, where you should make it. You know yep. those the ones you should Do you get make? nervous over these at all? Mm, well... Not really. Do you get nervous at anything? I got nervous once playing golf. Really? Yeah. Ooh. See? Drive for show and putt for dough. But that's why I'm playing with you, because you promised you're going to help that. Oh, you're going to get that out of my game. Oh, we'll get that out of your game. So what did I do wrong? Lots of things. We'll do that on another <laughs> hole. <laughs> we don't have enough tape. See, that's... Now, tell me, your nervous time when you were playing golf, when, when were you nervous? I, um, I got a phone call. Um, it was sort of between Origin and um, to go to... Brookwater was a course I'd hear Greg mm. Norman, I think, designed. Designed, yes. And to open it up, and I was going to hit balls, and it was a, it was a shootout. So there was all different celebrities. I think there was about 15 of us had one shot in, um, and we're playing with Greg, so we didn't know. So a helicopter lands as it does, <laughs> and Greg Norman comes out. And I've met some people, like I've met the Royals, you know, playing in England, but when Greg Norman came out, I've never been so nervous. You know? right. Well, I think because as a kid growing up in Queensland and, yep. you know, the shark, and he was, I think, the first real sports star I think Australia really had, and then to sit and to shake his hand and play golf and have him talk to you, it was, a, it was nervous hitting the ball. It'd probably be like you, grand final day, or, you know, Parramatta's in a grand final and you've got to <laughs> kick a goal from the sideline. I understand. And a Parramatta legend's there talking you through it or whatever. It was a nerve-wracking experience. And, and so what, you had a shot in front of the shark? Yeah, shot in front of the shark. So I, was, I think it was a 98 metre. It was a wedge in and, like, there was a couple of cricketers playing off four in and everybody would hit in and I was the 11th. I think there was about four to go. And uh, I just got up there and I was so nervous and Paddy Welch whispering, Paddy, <laughs> Gordon, tell us that, to, you know, whatever. And he was doing the commentary in. And, and I was shaking that much. I pulled back and I looked at Pat and Greg and then something in my head just said, I'm not supposed to hit this straight. I'm not supposed to hit it because I'm a footy player. <laughs> and then I just hit it really good and landed and we got a photo with Greg, got his clubs, he signed them all and the driver and... What, you won the clubs? You won Norman's won clubs? Won his clubs, won a year's membership and all that kind of stuff and it was really good and I actually even got paid to go there. Oh, what a gig, isn't it? I got, I got paid to play with Greg Norman. <laughs> That's oh, good. You've probably left a, uh, a lasting memory on the shark for sure. Oh yeah, mate, he rings me all the time <laughs> for tips. <laughs> Down there, we'll wait till left. Good. Looks good. Looks good. Oh, wonderful 
strong stuff from Ricky Fowler. I played with Ricky Fowler. I played with Sabatini. Like, I played with some really good players. I played with yourself. <laughs> but, mate, I love playing, and Lonard, so I love playing with guys that are at the top of the tree and, more importantly, they're really good blokes. And, you know, golf's about, you know, I think getting out with your mates and having a hit yep. and enjoying it. And those days, I get embarrassed if I don't play good. Of course, <laughs> everybody wants to hit it good, but I'm playing with guys and that's their profession. So um, I just love watching them hit great shots in there and enjoy the day. And, and playing with Ricky, what was that like? He's the new age golfer. Yeah, yeah Lonard and myself are the old ones and yeah. you've got a new age one there. Well, we all got dressed in orange. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, yeah. So we had the orange hat, the orange shirt. We stand on the thing. Ricky sort of looked at us like, what are you <laughs> idiots doing? And we had a couple of beers and he was absolutely fantastic. And I think him and Scotty, um, we're coming up the final day. I think the last yeah, three or four holes, they were fighting it out. But um, I think in the Pro-Am, I think he only had two birdies. And I right. think the 15th was his first. But he was a really good fellow. He's more like a skateboardy type of little yep. motorbike rider. Well, he I... is. You're right. He is a motorbike rider. What, what impressed you with his game? Like, he, he's your, he could, he'd probably come up to your hip. He's tiny. Yep. He hits the driver. That's straight and hard. You know how people hit and they draw? It just went dead straight. I said, well, he goes, I have a hit with my driver. He goes, swing it as hard as you can. And, it, and the ball just goes dead straight. So, like, it's a club. It was that, it was like swinging a sledgehammer. Like, it was just right. so heavy, I thought. But I, I don't know, just being so humble to be so good and be, a, you know, like a world athlete and just to be humble and to play 18 holes and spend five hours with guys that weren't taking it as serious yeah, as him right. and just giving us a few pointers every now and then was pretty good. Did you teach him anything? Had to have a beer around the course. <laughs> I think... I think we were like three over. Three oh. over par with the beers going around the course. <laughs> After the break, I attempt to take some of the frustration out of Gordy's game. Like, if you don't swear on a golf course, you haven't played enough golf. <laughs> have you? No, you haven't. You're yeah. right. So you've overread that. It's a little bit higher. What do you think rugby league players can learn from golf? I think the discipline of playing against yourself. I suppose when you're playing a team, it's easy for me to bag my teammates <laughs> and then go, oh, you know, like it was his fault or it's the left side or it's the fence or a kicking game. But when you're playing golf, it's all yourself. So it's, so it's your ball, it's your shot, it's your hole, it's your moment. And I think you can play with all different age groups. So playing with someone like a little bit more mature and yep. patience, I suppose. What golf gives me is just be patient. And if you don't practice, well, you're not going to get better. And patience, is that something I've never been on a rugby league field? Well, did you watch me? I argue with referees <laughs> all the time. So um, I suppose as you get older, you know, uh, you get a little bit more mature, but someone like a Darren Lockyer, you know, like you never see him flustered. Cameron Smith, like then, I watch him play golf, but this brings out everybody. Yeah, I mean, mate, golf, like if you don't swear on a golf course, you haven't played enough golf, <laughs> have you? No, you haven't, you're yeah. right. All right, we've got a beautiful par four here. It's gorgeous, it's the isn't it? sixth hole, a new designed hole by Ross Watson here. Where, where do I have to hit it? Well, you're asking me. I'm going to aim for that bunker and hopefully it either goes left or right of it. That's me. That's, that's my type of golf. Right. But what are you doing? Well, I'm going to hit a fade off the left trap, <laughs> but I'm going to follow you. Right here. Oh. Whoa. Different. Great shot, mate. <laughs> Gordy, you hit a massive drive up here and you've shortened this, uh, this par four into nothing. You've only got 86 metres, but it's still an elevated green off a down slope. Now, with these, you need to keep your weight forward. So don't try to lift the ball up Have in the air. Have you seen this? Yeah. That's easy. <laughs> well, get it's that always forward. forward. Well, just put a little bit of pressure forward and stay forward and the ball will go high in the air. The more that you're back here and trying to lift it in the air, 
more of the ball. Weight on low. the front foot. Weight on the front foot. 86 metres, weight forward a bit. Just swing your arms. Oh, thin to win. That's not what I told you to do. <laughs> My day is spent filling up Gordy's divots. Unbelievable. Hurry up, please. <laughs> it was a bad shot, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't a great shot, but the key is about getting out of out of that. So you've got to take risk out of play. So for mine, you've got to go to the fattest part of the green, which is a little bit left of the pin, yep. and to take this tree out of play. So you've got the right club, you've got yep. your 56. 60. 60. Your age. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Millier stance, just make contact with the ball first because it's a bit loose, the, sand, uh, the dirt around it. Pretty good. Hey, hey. How about that? You act that was a terrible lie, guys. <laughs> You've actually practiced that a lot, haven't you? <laughs> See, that's where that's where all amateurs are. <laughs> Every Saturday, mate, we're sitting in places like that. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that is frustrating, isn't it? Pretty good putt, mate, but <sighs> You said your putting's a problem. Now, I've been watching it. It's the beginning of your putting. You don't set up in the right spots. The stroke's all good, but you're kicking the dog for rolling over. You're not aiming in the right spot. All right, Gordy, we're going to keep this pretty simple, but it all comes back to the beginning. Every putt on a green should be a straight putt. So that's how you get your setup correct and you get the ball off on the right line. So there's got to be a breaking point of a putt, and that's when the ball slows down. So for mine, in this 12-footer, I'm going to aim somewhere into here. So from that point to that point is a dead straight putt. What I want to do is pick that as my breaking point. That's where the ball's going to slow down. I aim a putter face in there, then put my feet in. Now the hole's over there. I can see it in my peripheral, but I'm going to hit the putt towards there and just dead straight, and then my field will take over, and I'll just take the that break. is rubbish. That is it. Just I takes hope you didn't the get that break. on camera. That is ridiculous. But you've got to get the first bit right. And with a lot of amateurs, with you, with your original putt, you're aimed more at the at the pin you're looking at. You'd either have to push it or you'd have to pull it. So See, give it a putt. Okay, so then now I've got the line, but yep. it's the speed. So would I hit it just thinking that the hole's about here no, as well? No, the hole's there. You're still reacting to, to the, the hole, hole, but you're getting the first bit right. And very good question that because you've just got to get the aim bit right. Yep. So that's the starting point. The and then you feel the putt to there. So the speed is still to that feel. putt. Right. Putt ahead in first to where you want it to break. Yeah, you, know, you can have a number of spots. So where are you looking? About here somewhere? Yeah, uh, I was actually I was actually going to go over that little divot. Yep, but where it's I... where that's going to break, where it's going to slow down. It's going to slow down somewhere in around here. You can never be 100% right, but let's say it's going to be there. Nice. So you hit it a little bit hard, but yeah, still come out of the middle of the putter face, which is good. Things you learn on a golf course. That's what happens when you've got a good coach, huh? <laughs> You ever Please thought of coaching Parramatta? <laughs> <laughs> uh, same, th same again. Same with short putts. You've got to find a spot. The majority of the time, the shorter putts are a little bit straighter and you just aim towards the hole. You've got to get the first bit right. That's why someone like Jason Day works so hard when you see him in tournaments. He works so hard at the beginning bit. He, he really lines everything up and he puts his putter face down and then he's all ready to go. Great Queenslander. Yeah, he's one of the good ones. <laughs> Gordon's giving it to the supporters. Yeah, no need for that. There was an incident there in a state of origin and you've got to defend your mum. What did you do? Got it, haven't you? Oh, 100% you do. You're not an Aussie. Well, you're not human. No, I... Mate, we run out and I blame Lottie. But it's my actions, <laughs> but I'm blaming Lottie to Kiri. So we run out and he was on the wing and he looked up into the crowd. As you do when you're a winger, you get times like forwards when I'm good looking. <laughs> We're just sort of looking at the ball, but... He pointed, there was a sign in the crowd about my mum and then it was a game when Dane Carlo picked it up in the 79th minute and he ends up scoring right on the yep. 80th. He pushes off Moody and uh, beats Brett Hodson and scores in the corner and I've run across and, and instead of celebrating, I pointed to the guys in the crowd, you know, and I stuck my finger up at him. and you think that winning a state of origin in the 80th minute, why are they on this big ugly Queenslander running 10 metres past the celebration <laughs> to give it to the crowd? But... Um, <laughs> It's something like, um, I will stand by that. And then when the media come in the dressing room, they all talk and Wayne goes, what'd you do? And I said, that Wayne goes, die, we'll sort it out. And I just asked the media, what would you have done? Mm -hmm. Someone, and then they couldn't, I'll make my editors. I said, don't hide behind your editor this time. <laughs> As a man, you write what you would have done, don't, you know? So um, sometimes 
my emotions got the better of you, but as you get older and more experienced, but I don't think I would have ever control those emotions. Those emotions that come out then would come out now as a 43-year-old as well. Now, talking about that, when you spoke of Brett Hodgkinson, who was a Parramatta player, then on to be a, a Tigers player, picked him up like a rag doll and just threw him over the sideline. Have you seen that he, footage? Oh, he's so times? big. Do you know how big he is, Gowie? Yeah. He's like, mate, he's a hundred kilos, six foot guy, so strong. No, he's, <laughs> mate, Brett Hodgkinson's one of those guys that small, lean, he's like a golfer, like he's, but he played, he played tougher, he played bigger than what he was, tremendous player. Just one of those moments when he tried to get around me and his collar was sticking up and I just grabbed his collar. And when I sort of pulled him, I think he slipped and he's come off his feet. Right. And it wasn't that heavy, to be quite honest. Don't tell him. Yeah, he was. <laughs> no, he wasn't. And when I swung him once, the silent was out. I might get him around one more time and see where he goes and then just slung him out. And, you know, it is one of those moments that you might get remembered by, but um, I feel a little bit sorry for him because he's a better player than that. <laughs> Still got it, huh? Relax. See the ball, hit the ball. What's that, Gowie? I'm coming yeah, that's, across that's it. Moving, yeah, but no, the, the first bit is you're coming back inside this way. So instead of the club coming back, yeah, so set up, set up like you're going to hit it. You're bringing the club back in here, around here, yeah. it goes up. Right, and then, then for you to get room, you go forward, forward and it gets stuck down. So what you've got to set, just set up like you're going to hit one. Yep, so it's like that. Yeah, that way. What you want to do, because you're standing in really close to it too, so stand a bit where your arms are just, this left arm's a bit stretched out, only a little bit, and then the club goes straight back, so it's here. So what you're doing, you're coming in here yeah. too fast, right? So just got to go, and the shaft actually goes up, right? Yours is going straight back here. So we just want it to go straight back, it goes up, and then your shoulders turn. Didn't a guy win a major swinging a golf club like that? Doesn't Jim Fury bring it back like that? Yeah, but he's not you. Oh, OK. <laughs> that's who I've been modelling off. Oh, good model. All these years. Well, that's, he's... But he does, doesn't he? Well, he goes, but no, he doesn't go back in no. here. He goes... So, like, from And then there, he goes up here, and then he goes back there under there, here. he's perfect. But, oh, through impact, it's amazing. He's one of the best at impact you'll ever see. Strike is good, it looks good. It is good. It's sensational. But you, if you go this way, you've yeah. turned too early and yeah, you've yeah. gone, you've got to go up and then you're up and you, then you move forward. So just keep it simple, just go that way, back to that way. Right. Strike is good, it looks good. This. It is good. It's sensational. Now you know how to putt, that'll be an easy up and down for par. That's a cold-hearted competitor who doesn't smile a whole lot on the golf course. Yeah, uh, Charles Barkley. Charles. <laughs> In those pro-ams, you see a lot of different golf courses. Is there one golf course that you've played that absolutely stands out? Obviously, Indrapilly is one of your favourites, but, you know, in those pro-ams, any standouts? I think Coolum. I think Coolum, the way it's set up, like, like, I come out here and play at Indrapilly, but when you play courses that are set up for pros, you realise how good they really are. So when we weekend hackers go around and we play and the pin's in the middle of the thing, there's, but when you go <laughs> and they say, oh, the pin's going to be there in the water holes and all that, you realise they're faster. But Coulomb's is such a picturesque place and I think all the, the greens run towards the mountain and all these yep. little things, so, you know, just learning. But I think Coulomb's the best. Now, your boys both play rugby league. Have you got them into golf yet? play golf, I take them out as much as I can. We get the cart, got their clubs down, they play tennis. I'm one of those dads, I'm not, like if they play rugby league, brilliant. And I love it, because it's given me so much. But they play soccer, they play rugby for the school. Um, they do swimming, they do little athletics, uh, they have tennis lessons. And um, I've brought them out here and they've had a golf lesson and you know, they're 12 and 11 now, but make sure that they try all the sports and pick up the one that they love the most. And you think that day will come sooner than later that they'll actually be hitting it better than you on the golf course? I just want, I just don't want to be a lonely old man. I just want them to come pick <laughs> Dad up and we come out to the club and then they can drop me back home on the way. So like, then they go, hey Dad, let's go have a hit of golf and you yeah, buy my membership. And I think that's the greatest thing about golf is you can play with your grandfather, your father and your son and maybe, you know, it's, but that'd be pretty cool. You know, yeah. the, and there's not too many sports you can do that with and be competitive. But there's something that makes a professional athlete tick. What is the bit that's made Gordon Tallis 
tick and be one of the best rugby league players of all time? Uh, I think you've got to work hard, you've got to know yourself and I think the fear of failing, I think that's what drove me on. I never wanted to let my mates here. As a golfer, it's really hard it's to you. because you're letting yourself down. But when you've got your mates and you know that you can let them down at any time, that, that's what drove me. The On Par Nearest the Pin Challenge, brought to you by Teed Up Golf Tours, the US Masters and Open Championship Tour experts. The winner and a friend will fly to Hamilton Island, where they'll enjoy three nights accommodation and two rounds of golf at Hamilton Island Golf Club. You're up against Peter Stirl and he's currently leading at nine metres. Okay, so anywhere inside that. Wow. I want you to come into my office now. This is where pressure builds, okay? You right. know what pressure's about. You want a tea? Yep. Yeah, I've got a couple for you. Are you serious? <laughs> Parramatta Eels tea? <laughs> come on. I'm desperate. Did still, right. right, give me one of these. All right, nice oh. and close, mate. Here we go. 110 metres into the breeze. Plenty of green. It's high enough. I'd push that a bit, huh? Yeah. Right edge of the green. Well. Still though, still leading. Those bloody tees. <laughs> All right, mate, you got it pin high, but I don't know if well. you've got it inside still though. So let's just give this a measure. Oh, I guarantee it's not. <laughs> Nine metres. He does play a lot more than me. Is that that's an excuse, isn't it? <laughs> that's an I excuse. I said it'd be about 14 metres. All right, port sight there. Officially 16 metres. <sighs> but you can still make it through here. Oh, nice! <laughs> How good is that? <sighs> Sterlo, did, did, did Sterlo get a par? Uh, still, I got a par. Yes, okay. he did. Um, nice putting. You, you take it up pretty easy. I got a really good coach on the sixth hole. <laughs> Mate, I really appreciate you coming out today Thank and you, spending mate. time for with me. me. Good luck with your golf. Thank and, you. Uh, and we'll see you on uh, Fox Sports. I'd like to say good luck to the Eels, but the three Queensland <laughs> teams. Huh? You're just mean, aren't you? <laughs> this has been a production of Fox Sports.